like to do is show you guys how to graph uh, this absolute value function and then also find the domain in the range. So when graphing this, there's a couple things we need to remember. First of all, what does even the absolute value of a graph look like? And if we were to set up an x and y table, what we'd kind of notice is whenever I remember x, um, if I plug in you know, negative 4, the absolute value of negative 4 is positive 4. And the absolute value of positive 4 is still going to give you 4. So what our graph ends up looking like is what we call a V. Because remember what I talked about, you know, positive 4, positive 4 still gives you 4, and negative 4 still gives you 4. The absolute value of negative 2 is still 2. The absolute value of positive 2 is still 2. Okay? So it's a symmetrical V. Now, there's a couple things we need to remember then. If, if you can remember, this is what we call the paragraph. If you guys can remember what the paragraph works with, this will help you leaps and bounds when trying to determine what is a graph with the transformation. So there's a couple things we need to look at when dealing with this. When we're dealing with transformations, x minus h, there's a couple things we need to notice. First of all is transformations. Whenever I add or subtract anything inside of my function, see here's my function absolute value of x. Whenever I add or subtract anything to my x, that's going to be shifting my graph left or right. Um, and since it's a negative value, it's going to do the opposite. So if I say x plus 3, that's really the same thing as x minus a negative 3, which is going to tell me to shift my graph three units to the left. So that's what that's telling me to do right now, is shift this graph three units to the left. Then k tells me to shift my graph up or down. And if I look at this equation, I don't have a k. All I had was my shifting three units to the left. So therefore, my graph is going to remain this value. The next thing we need to do is determine what is our domain and range. Remember, the domain is the set of all x values that are defined for your function. Well, as this graph is going to continue on forever in the negative direction and in the positive direction, it's going to cover all of my x values. Every x point, every x value has a point on this graph. So therefore, our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, or what we call all real numbers. Our range is a little bit different story. Our range, if you notice, from here up, I have a y value, right? You can see all these y values, they have a part on the graph. And as they keep on going up to infinity, they're going to continue having parts. However, let's look at the negative y values. At negative y, does this graph, is there a point on the graph at a negative y? And the answer is no, because the lowest my graph goes is 0. So therefore, I say the range is from 0 to infinity, or all positive solutions. And that's how you graph and find the domain and range.